Hello, thanks for joining us today for a demonstration of the X509 authentication functionality in the Form Sentry API Security Gateway. The Form Sentry API Gateway enables code free, point and click building of APIs to integrate legacy and modern systems, connect cloud and mobile technologies, and extend business applications and services securely beyond the enterprise border. This session will focus on Sentry's X509 authentication features, highlighting two different use cases. The first use case demonstrates how X509 client certificate authentication can be used to gain access to an API being secured by Form Sentry. The second use case illustrates using X509 client certificate for secure single sign-on to a cloud service via SAML 2.0, and we'll demonstrate this with Salesforce.com. Some of the advantages of using X509 authentication for APIs and single sign-on include Username and password not required. This in itself has many obvious benefits. Certificate validation and revocation. The signed client certs are validated and can easily be revoked. Multi-factor authentication. X509 client authentication is often the first factor in a multi-factor authentication scheme. Easy integration with existing identity stores. Most identity platforms, for example, Active Directory, already contain user attributes for X509 certificates. Widespread client support. Modern client applications for APIs, web services, and portals, including web browsers, mobile apps, SOAP clients, etc., support TLS with the ability to provide a specific client certificate during the SSL handshake. And there are several use cases. X509 client certificate authentication can be a cornerstone security parameter for several use cases across multiple types of services and applications. This includes derived PIV, smart card authentication, mobile device and mobile app authentication with single sign-on, authentication and single sign-on for local or cloud-hosted APIs, both SOAP and REST, and Enterprise Identity Federation and single sign-on for web portals, for example, SAML 2.0 single sign-on. So X509 client authentication sounds like a good idea, but why use Form Sentry for this? Well, there are several important reasons that Form Sentry should be used for this type of processing. Security. First and foremost, Form Sentry security pedigree make it the most secure option available for X509 client authentication. This includes everything from the FIPS NDPP certified hardware, the hardened Form OS that runs on the hardware or virtual appliance, the US DoD certified PKI processing engine with no open SSL libraries, and the list goes on and on. Performance. Through available crypto acceleration and intelligent caching to reduce I.O. with identity calls, Performing the X509 authentication with Form Sentry will provide an order of magnitude performance gain over running the same types of X509 identity processing at the application tier. Management. All certs and authentication policies are managed in the same secure product. When changes are required, there's only one product to update and no need to update each individual application server. Extensibility. This functionality easily extends to many use cases. For instance, a single X509 client certificate authentication with Sentry can enable a user to access unlimited local or cloud-based APIs, services, web portals through single sign-on technology supported by Sentry, such as SAML, OAuth, and OpenID Connect. It's easy and cost-effective. Sentry's no-code interface make implementing these features very fast, without professional services, and without the need for hiring or contracting developers to implement this functionality at the application tier. The Form Sentry API Security Gateway converges three key functions of technology, security, identity, and integration. The two use cases demonstrated today will pull from each of these categories. For more information on Form Sentry or a live demonstration of all of these features, please visit www.formsys.com. Let's now jump to the use case demonstrations. The first use case will demonstrate how an X509 client certificate can be used for authentication to access a cloud-hosted API. Form Sentry will be acting as a secure reverse proxy, or a gateway, for the API. The API request and response will go through Sentry. Using SOAP Sonar as our API client tool, we'll make a series of API calls through Sentry to the Open Weather Map API. This RESTful weather service provides current weather data in JSON format and requires an app ID to gain access. The first step is the client app making a call for the API into Form Sentry. Sentry will do the X509 authentication of the provided client cert and then map the X509 to a user account in an external identity store, Active Directory. In addition to mapping the cert to a user with the AD call, Sentry will also collect information, information about the user from AD, specifically an app ID, which will later be used when calling the weather API. After authentication succeeds, Sentry will generate a cookie for the user to enable single sign-on for this service and it will map the user information to this cookie, so the app ID pulled from AD will then be tied to that cookie for future use. The client will then make a second call, this time with the cookie generated from the first call. 
Sentry will validate the cookie to establish who the user is, then extract the app ID from the cookie and inject it into the URL as a query parameter before proxying the call down to the weather API. The weather service will validate the app ID and return the JSON weather data through Sentry back out to the client. Sentry is essentially acting as a secure reverse proxy for the service. Let's first review the Sentry configuration before we send some traffic through. We start with the HTTPS listener policy. This is the policy that accepts the incoming traffic at the protocol level uh, from the client. Associated to the listener policy is an SSL termination policy. The SSL termination policy is where the X509 client authentication happens. You can specify here a key pair, which is the Sentry server certificate. You can specify a signer group, which is the group of CA and intermediate certificates that are used to do the validation of the client certificate that comes in. That's also where you specify the CRL or certificate revocation checking. And then you can also subject, uh, associate the subject DN of the certificate to a user and then specify an ACL policy, which is an access control list in Sentry. So this is where we are mapping the subject DN of the certificate to a known user in a user store, which in this case is Active Directory. You can also specify the protocols that you want to support on this policy as well as the cipher suites and Sentry uh, disables many of the known weak or vulnerable ciphers by default. Once the SSL client auth succeeds at the network policy layer, the processing moves to the REST policy that we've defined for the Open Weather Map API. The REST policy ties together the network listener and the remote policy, which are essentially the plumbing to get the traffic in and out of Form Sentry. It's also where the cookie is generated for the user. On the X509 authentication virtual directory, we have a task list that maps the user information pulled from AD, which is the app ID, uh, to the cookie, and then redirects the client to the current weather virtual directory. The current weather virtual directory is requiring a cookie authentication. So this now it has to have the FS session cookie, which was set on the authentication call in order to get in. And there's also a task list there that takes information that's mapped to that cookie and applies it to the query parameters of the request going along to the backend system. In this task list, we have a mapping that takes an app ID user attribute, which was coming from the cookie and maps it to the query parameter of the request. The policy can be invoked using a variety of different testing tools, including a web browser. We're going to use SOAP Sonar as our API uh, testing client for this. The first test case we have is the X509 auth test case, and this is the call to the auth directory which, where the X509 authentication will happen. So on this test case, we are specifying a specific client certificate uh, that aligns with the signer group we have enabled on the SSL termination policy in Sentry. So this client certificate will be provided to Sentry. Sentry will validate this against a known group of CA and intermediate certificates. And then it will also map this subject DN to a user in Active Directory. The result will be a 302 redirect with our set cookie header, which is giving us our FS session cookie, which can then be used for authentication into the weather virtual directory. So we can now use this cookie for access to the weather service. We'll click over to the weather test case and looking at the HTTP headers, we can go ahead and paste in the cookie that we just got back from the auth directory. And if we look at the request URI parameters, you can see there's a query for London weather data, but there's no app ID specified here. That is only going to be injected by Sentry. That's not included from the client. So we make a call in we get a 200 back, and this is our JSON weather data being returned from the weather service out through Sentry back to our client application. Sentry injected that app ID into the URI query parameters. I can now use this Sentry FS session cookie to gain access to the service, and all other user information pulled from AD when the cookie was generated is available to the processing engine in Sentry. This is a very powerful feature of Sentry. If we look at these two transactions in the Sentry log, we'll see quite a bit of information. We'll start with the post to the auth directory where the X509 authentication happened and succeeded. We can see the authentication um, happening of the X509 certificate and the successful mapping of the subject DN to a user um, via the AD lookup. We can see a cookie is being generated and the client being redirected to the weather service. If we look at the second call, we'll see the get request into the 
weather virtual directory, first thing to take a look at here is the request URL coming in, and you'll notice there's no app ID there. Sentry validates the session cookie to identify who the user is, and then makes a call out to the backend system, and in doing so, adds that app ID into the URI uh, that the weather service needs to validate the client. And then the weather service returns its 200 OK and its JSON message. Uh, and Sentry could then optionally process this message as well. So you could do things like data loss prevention, or maybe you convert that JSON to XML, or you invoke lots of other processing options through the Sentry task engine. So that wraps up uh, use case one. And the solution highlights include secure X509 client authentication with certificate pinning to a specific user in Active Directory, enabling single sign-on for multiple APIs from a single PKI authentication, interoperability with, a, with any client or mobile app technology that supports SSL, and removes the need to store API keys on the client applications. For use case two, we'll do X509 authentication with Sentry behaving as an identity provider, enabling SAML 2.0 single sign-on for Salesforce.com. With this flow, we'll use a web browser as the client, which is simulating an app on our mobile device. We make a call into Sentry with an X509 cert. Sentry validates the cert and then redirects with, with a SAML to log the user into Salesforce. The first step is the client making a call into Sentry with a specific X509 cert. Sentry validates the cert and like with use case one, makes an LDAP call to Active Directory to map the cert to a user. This time Sentry grabs the email address of the user record associated to the X509 cert and stores it with the generated cookie. Sentry then redirects the client to an STS policy in Sentry that consumes the cookie for authentication, generates a SAML that includes the email from AD and redirects the client with the SAML to Salesforce.com. Since Salesforce and Sentry have a pre-existing trust relationship, Salesforce validates the SAML and logs the user in based on the email attribute included in the Sentry-generated SAML. In the Sentry configuration, we start with a JSON policy that is used to handle the X509 authentication and then redirect to the STS policy. The same HTTPS listener from use case one is used, and once the authentication succeeds, a task list is used to redirect to the STS policy with a cookie. The STS policy consumes the cookie for authentication and then generates a SAML assertion, uh, including the user attribute, the email address user attribute that was pulled from Active Directory during the initial authentication process. Once the SAML is generated, the user is redirected to Salesforce. Using a browser, we can test this setup. We'll hit the JSON policy that we've defined for this. And we will be redirected. Well, first, we'll be prompted to select our certificate. So the browser recognizes that it's hitting a server, in this case, Form Sentry, that's requiring a specific client certificate. So it prompts with a list of known certificates. Once we select the certificate, Sentry will validate the X509 certificate, generate a cookie, and redirect to the STS policy. The STS policy will authenticate the user based on the cookie, pull information from that cookie that's necessary to generate the proper SAML, and then redirect the browser with the SAML assertion to Salesforce.com. And you can see here we're logged in now to Salesforce.com using uh, the email address uh, as the SF user account. So we're logged in now with the training department and that is the email address training at formsys.com that's associated to my X509 certificate. We can see this in the Sentry logs. When we refresh our access log we'll see two transactions. The first is the get request that we made in where the X509 authentication succeeds. We'll see that a cookie is generated after successful authentication and the user is redirected to the STS policy. The next call in is to the STS policy, where the cookie is first validated for authentication, and then a SAML assertion is generated. And Sentry will show you the XML SAML, and inside of that XML SAML, you will see the user attribute, the email address that was pulled from Active Directory, and then we'll also show you the encoded response, which is sent back to the browser. And the browser, using again JavaScript and following the SAML 2.0 web browser profile, will then go to salesforce.com and provide the SAML assertion for authentication. The solution highlights for use case two include secure X509 client certificate authentication, enablement of SAML 2.0 single sign-on via client certificate authentication, 
and the ability to dynamically generate SAML assertions based on information stored in LDAP not provided by the client. This concludes today's session. If you have any questions, please visit www.forumsys.com. Thank you and have a nice day.